know, my mother was given a similar option, and I'm so glad that she chose she chose me. Uh, my brothers make fun of me, though. They call me the mistake sometimes. Mm. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm grateful because I'm here. I'm 47 years old, right? I grew up people telling me, you will never amount to nothing because of circumstances. My mother was told to get rid of me, but yet I'm standing here in front of you as a result. So thanks, hey, Mom, Jesus. and thanks to all the moms out there that have chosen. Now, look. And, I am going to start asking men to come up and share their stories as well. Thank I would you. love to hear men to say what they felt when someone in their life said, I'm going to kill your baby. How did you deal with it? All right, so again, this up here is not just for women because abortion affects all of us, everything from the economy. Again, 20 million black babies killed to abortion since Roe versus Wade. You know the buying power that America lost as a result? So when you're arguing with those people who don't believe in life or want to say, oh, that's a religious thing, then throw it back on them. Let them know that in those 20 million, we could have had doctors, we could have had teachers, is the city school district, right, predominantly blacks, saying we don't have teachers right. that look like our people? We'll stop okay. killing them. Come on now. Stop promoting it. Anyways, I told you once that I write my, my speeches down because I'll keep you here forever. Well, this is kind of like a preview of that. So, Mary Beth, I believe you're closing us in prayer as well. Oh, one more thing, Mike. Um, before Mary Beth comes up, we all know that, how many of you have been lamenting after you watch the news every night? Just a lamenting, just a watching, a unraveling of our nation's cities in many different ways. Seeing uh, unimaginable things begin to happen and change. Well, I want you to know that there's a cause and effect to that. The nations that forget God, it says in Psalm 9, will be turned into hell. Yep. Hell is chaos. The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's exactly what we've embraced. We've taken liberty and freedom from the least and most defenseless as a nation, and we've ensconced it as some sort of right. And we are astonished when justice flees from our courts. That's right. So, when you look at the macro picture, you can be overwhelmed and say, how in the world can this change? Well, it changes one person at a time. It changes with us first. And then we begin to live in alignment with God's ways and God's laws and God's love. And we begin to infect others with that same love and viewpoint. So one by one, I just want to leave you with one thing. When you're looking at the news, when you're praying here, focus on the one. Yes. Focus on the one. One life can change a whole city. One life can change That's a whole right. family. One life can change a whole nation. It's happened in the past. So don't lose heart. I'm going to ask Mary Beth to come up and close us in prayer and uh, be encouraged. Now, Aisha has something to say. Come on, Aisha. <laughs> So sorry, Mary Beth. We really do want to get you all home and let you pray out and everything. But Mike had just said something, you know, when you were talking about the one, and I just, you know, my, my heart perked up. Um, I don't know how many people here have been, you know, had an abortion or know somebody that has had an abortion or know somebody who has helped someone have an abortion, right? Whether it's a man who talked their girlfriend into having an abortion and again we want to hear those stories as well and how someone might have been repented um, but when we're talking about that one person you know the forgiven and set free from having taken part in abortion is so important to be able to be forgiven by that and if you're here and you've never really spoken about your abortion or you still feel like you're riddled with any kind of guilt and shame and you're, you're not set free from that, please, um, you can come up to me. Um, I do a lot of post-abortive counseling with women. And if it's you know, men, again, see one of the men that are up here, or as well, we can plug you into someone. There's a lot of different places around here, right? Like, so maybe it's not a one-on-one, -on -one, but there are different places that we can get you plugged into. If you know someone that has had an abortion, they are 
hurting and they may not admit it, they may not even understand it, but talk to them and encourage them to talk to someone. And again, I am more than willing to be, you know, I'm close to board of myself and I will tell you, when you're talking about that one person standing up and being able to, you know, cut through all the noise or champion for life, a lot of times the people that have had an abortion and come through it and been able to be forgiven and set free, those are the people that become some of our greatest champions. And if we can't get these men and women who have taken part in or had an abortion forgiven and set free, we're gonna continue on with this spiral. So I just wanted to put that out there to please reach out to people and have them seek help and we will help find somebody. Mary Beth, I'm gonna turn it over to you now.